What's up everybody? Welcome back to FNG Academy. I just had a quick announcement. I'm proud to say that we've been helping people get selected for three years now. I've been getting a lot of messages about uh, people thanking us and saying that they just graduated from uh, selection and they got selected. Uh, people graduating the Q course. Uh, one of my buddies just sent me a video uh, from the Charlie committee. Yes. If you guys have ever heard of the FNG Academy, raise your hands and all their hands went up and it just filled me with pride. Um, so part of the way that we do that is making sure that you guys are physically fit and ready for selection. And the way we've been doing that for the past couple years is by sending you to a Green Beret we know and trust, Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. So if you want to get selected, you need to be in the best shape possible and you need a programmer who knows what they're talking about. So go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. Use code word BUCK to get a discount. Tell him we sent you and hook you up. Congrats to everyone who's been getting selected lately and we'll see you guys on the next one. What's up everybody? Welcome back to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. It's been a while since we dropped the bombs. <laughs> <laughs> Abel's Abel, lazy ass ain't gonna do it he though. Just he just stopped. Now up, we bro. just look stupid. Yeah. Just like, He's like, Anyways. I did it one time. You're not getting it ever again. All right. All right, guys. So, hey, real quick, thank you for watching. If you guys don't know, Kurt busted his butt to set up the team room, our Patreon, to help you guys still get selected, motivational content. Um, and all that stuff. So we have a Patreon set up right now. We'll link it down below. Go check it out, the team room. There's tiers that you could sign up for, you know, if it's from $3 a month. Yeah, all the way from supporting the channel to exclusive access to videos to all the way up to the actual mentorship program if you want to go that route. Right, so please go check it out. And if you want to support the channel, if you appreciate what we do and you want us to keep going, um, the Patreon is helping a lot. It's helping to fund these trips and help us to continue to fly around the country to link up with each other and make these videos. So thank you guys so much. Go check out the team room. Uh, just know the Ruck Trainer is doing great. Check out the website. It has a, a counter now at the top so you know exactly when the next drop is going to be. So you don't have to ask anymore when the next Ruck Trainer drop is going to be. We have a countdown ready to go. And another question we get all the time is when is the, are the boots dropping? I get it. You guys are excited. Trust us. We're excited too. No one has done this ever before with military boots. No Green Beret has brought uh, a pair of Green Berets bringing the civilian market and all the R&D in the millions and millions, if not billions of dollars spent on research and development for the civilian running market and just made it for military. Right. No one's done it and it blows my mind, but we'll, we are doing it and it's almost done. So stick around real soon you'll have the boots um and you guys we're going to be making it for law enforcement and military uh, at the same time so we got le taken care of we'll have them black for you guys so we're pretty excited big things yep. coming if you didn't see we just linked up with tyler gray that was pretty awesome that was awesome dude <laughs> that, was <laughs> that was cool sweet. we did the podcast we did uh, beers and breakdowns with him uh and then he's going to come back and we're going to do i think we might run back another podcast and then yeah. do more beers and breakdowns with the unit because I want to hear what he says about yep. the Delta. Uh, and that being said, real quick, if you guys ever wonder why a lot of CAG guys and tier one guys don't like to talk about, they don't like to say CAG, they don't like to say, you know, what unit they're in, it's because it's they're not supposed to. They get threatened a lot that when you get out of those tier one units that you're not going to talk about it, you're mm -hmm. not going to say what you are, or what you did. They want you to basically just disappear. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of taboo to come out and be like, yeah, I was CAG. So a lot of times they'll say I was in that place or I was in the unit yeah. or stuff like that. The guys that do come out and explicitly say it are the guys that are kind of not invited back for like the functions or anything like that. Yeah, they call it PNG, yeah. persona non grata. So it's, it's kind of a big deal in that community. Um, but now you guys know. So if they're ever hesitant to talk about it or say CAG or, you know, now you know why. You don't want to get like... Some people don't care, mm -hmm. um, but anyway, now you know. But let's jump into today's video, which is kind of a <laughs> wild one. I mean, it's called War Horse One, and this thing is bananas. <sighs> so War Horse One, <sighs> kind of produced, directed, acted by a guy named Johnny Strong, who Fast and for the me, Furious. yeah, for me, Fast and Furious is like my holy grail movie. Love that movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And so I saw that Johnny Strong was doing a war movie. Got excited. 
No, not really. No? <laughs> I immediately, I was concerned. Oh, no. <laughs> because I was like... I was hopeful. I, he, he was one of the worst characters in the movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so knowing that he was doing this, I went into it a little apprehensive. And uh, for good reason. Yeesh. They might as well have called this movie Guy Walks with Girl <laughs> instead of War Horse 1. Because I feel like 90% of the movie is them just walking together yeah. on this little hike. It's like an outdoor hike. Guy steals child and is mean to her <sighs> for multiple days. This movie, I'm going to be honest, we'll just save it. You know what? Let's just dive in. Let's get in. into the movie. Let's just get into it. I don't want to tell you anymore. RPG, RPG! <laughs> I don't know if things happen for a reason. <laughs> if it's fate, <laughs> destiny, or the hand of God. Pause. Oh my God. Bro, you gotta be f- kidding me. He, he was like, I gotta do my best Vin Diesel impression on this <laughs> one. <laughs> I, like, I don't got friends. I got family. I have- <laughs> First of all, the the intro, I was I was actually surprised by the actors in the beginning doing their little back and forth that the talent was solid. Mm-hmm. The acting seemed really solid to me of those guys, and I was like, oh, I'm just kind of hopeful. Like, maybe this is going to be a good movie. And then all of a sudden, RPG, RPG, and he's falling out of a helicopter, like, <laughs> way high in the air. Like, yeah. way, way higher, like 10 stories up. There's no way that you're going to survive this. And all of a sudden, we're supposed to believe that the dunk, 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 of all the tree branches is slowing him down enough to save his life. Yeah. And that somehow yeah. he survives. It's not. Uh, and then he comes in, he's like, it's the hand of God. <laughs> I was like, the the hand of God? Like, you you expect us to believe that you survived yeah. this? It's like, I'm starting to question, like, is this a serious movie or like one of those spoof movies? You yeah, know? like S- Sisu. Sisu yeah, came like, in and like got Sisu, us, and right. Sisu, and you're just like, oh, it's supposed to be serious. And you're like, oh, wait a minute. It's not serious at all. And, <laughs> and then you're like, oh, it's awesome, though. It's yeah. cool that it's not serious. That's not what they were going for here. And it immediately is like, what the hell? Yeah. Yeah, it's not uh, not the best way to open the movie. It, no. it, but, I mean, honestly, it set the tone for what, what is you're really getting. Yeah. yeah. Because it's like, let's just go to the next one. I mean, all right, so the scene's weird, right? The thing that got me on this is tactically his decision to just come right on top of the hill in broad daylight. Yeah, not hiding in the tree line. Look at all those trees. Like, yeah. maybe just duck in there. Like, it's not going to make a big difference for your radio if you're 10 feet that way. Right now, you're just silhouetted on top of this mountain. The, that's the thing that the, the kind of recurring theme in this movie is that he he knows a little bit about like what to use so there's some kind of advisory going on Mm -hmm. or he's like a fanboy or Mm -hmm. something but not enough to know actually right so you're that's a good point is first of all he's completely out in the open instead of just going into the tree line you're in enemy territory why would you just be standing out in this hilltop you know there's enemy around you just got shot down right and then the biggest part that bothers me is that he immediately starts calling out by name all his teammates yeah it's like, we never do that. Yeah. We all have call signs for a reason. You should not be calling out your buddy's first names. like <laughs> Sean Rogers? Sean, Sean Rogers? Rogers? <laughs> Sean, please call me. <laughs> Social security number? I don't want to have to call your wife who yeah. lives at this address. Yeah, it's like, it was just, <laughs> it's just one of those little things that we don't do. And so the minute you do it here, you look like an idiot. Yeah. Kind of what we were talking about with Tyler on how like the subtle things to create authenticity is completely missing from this movie yes across the board yeah it's there just a little bit but not enough to do it right yeah. and it's like just go the extra mile and do it right i've got tangos at 500 meters to the north they're pushing the current side i'm moving to intercept over negative war horse i say again that you low bro 
broke up on impact. Disengage. Negative castle. Those are my men in that helo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh dude. He's, i love it he's just like he's so resolved to go he's like those are my men in that helo i have to go it's like they just blew it up again bro. Like, dude they're not they're double dead like they're, they're disintegrated like i hate i hate this scene i hate his like it, obvious choice to be like i'm a hero those are my men right. and i read a book once and this is what they do yeah and it's like no if you have intel telling you that everyone's dead there's no signs of life they crash they're dead why do you want to go join them trying to what pull are you going to carry eight bodies or five bodies with you to no. an exfil it's the dumbest thing possible it doesn't make any sense whatsoever and then all of a sudden, a random RPG. Why would that guy shoot an RPG at a crash site? A helicopter crashed. Why would he waste an RPG to shoot at it again? Uh, it's just, I don't There's know. nobody moving. <laughs> what are you shooting at? I don't know, man. And the part, again, that talks about authenticity is you look at what he's wearing. And for one, shout out to, I don't know if you noticed his uniform. And they all wear it in here. It's called Atex Camo. I want to say it's actually a former SF guy that started that company. The camo is awesome. But everything is brand new. His his uniform's brand new. His uh, the kit that he's wearing is brand new. His rifle's brand new. Everything on it is like brand new, fresh off the shelf. And he's supposed to be a seasoned operator. Yeah, it's like it's, his his stuff's gonna be customized. It's gonna be dirty. It's gonna be painted. Whatever you know. And it's just, it's just not... ridiculous. This whole scene is so stupid. Like, hey guy, they're all dead. I gotta go get them. They're my men. And it's like, is that what you think that we do? We just do stupid stuff because it's in our hearts and blood. I have to write a book. Yeah, it's like one day they're gonna write about me. It's like, dude, get give me a break. I'm sorry, are we gonna have to censor that out? But this movie's ass. sounds passionate about this one, right? Oh my God, it just this irritates one, me emotionally. Like one thing with a movie is it's good to get emotionally involved in a movie. That's normally a sign of a good movie. I got emotionally involved in this movie for all the wrong fucking yes, reasons. Yes, me too. And it pissed me off. This movie pissed me off. I felt disrespected by this movie. Exactly. Because it's like you're not you're not a fan of special operations, in my opinion. You you may truly be a fan, but the way this come off came off in your execution of this movie is that you're using us it's exploitation. You're exploiting us in order to show Hollywood that you're a lead character and that you should be cast more in more action films. That's what you did. You funded your own movie. In my opinion, watching this, you funded this, you you put it up, you directed it, you acted in it, you did all this to prove to Hollywood that you should be the leading star in one of their next movies. And what did you do it on? Our backs and our reputations. Because this is ass. Seconds here and they're evaporating fast. We're looking at the crash site right now. Team's gone. You're on your own, son. We're in contact, you move on. We're back. I missed that the first time. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> My guy says, if you go, you're going to die. He says, I can live with that. <laughs> no, that's, oh. that's the opposite oh. of living with that, dude. <laughs> you, you actually can't live with that because you're dead. I imagine that wasn't written in the script. He was like, hey. I'm just going to improv this one. Yeah. And afterwards, he's like, you hear that? You hear that? Right? And everybody's oh, like, yeah, yeah. That. Oh, he's the director. So he went and hand clapped himself. He just ah. ran up to himself. He's like, good job, bro. I nailed it. Oh, man. He said, you could die. He said, I could live with that. Like, no, nah, that's the opposite of what dying means, my dude. That was just stupid ass writing. Oh, man. Like, why would you say that? I could live with that. And then the music is so dramatic and corny. It's, it almost takes me back to like... Like uh, '90s action movies, yeah, for like, sure. Dur, yeah. dur, dur. <laughs> like the the drama in the song goes up so high that you almost can't hear what they're saying a lot yeah. of times. I Just, think that's why I missed it the first time. Hilarious, Abel. <laughs> like, have you seen this yet? You could die. Oh. 
So good. there's actually a lot of stock footage usage. And I only know that because of like when we did the Catalina Island uh -huh. and like all like the aerial shots of whatever. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it came from wherever you get your stock footage from. <laughs> and it's all throughout the movie. All right, pause. Yeah, that was the most garbage reload I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, you're not going to... It's just wrong. It's not even like a bad reload. It's just wrong. You ran out of ammunition, so your bolt's going to be locked to the rear. Mm. You're going to dump a mag in your workspace. Everybody who's been to the range knows workspace. It's not even a special yeah. operations thing anymore. It's just a normal thing that people who like to shoot guns go to their workspace so that right. way they can keep eyes on target and they could do their mag changes. Yep. You don't even know to do that? You don't even know to do workspace, bro? That's like Army 101. And then you run out of ammo. So if you shot guns, you would know that now your bolt's locked to the rear. So you're going to dump the mag, replace the mag, release that slide lock, and your slide's going to go forward and reload the next and chamber the next round. So why are you slamming in your mag and then and pulling on your it, charging yeah. handle? Your slide's already back. A charging handle pulls your slide back. It's just stupid. Like, you you clearly have this Gucci setup suppressed and all the Gucci stuff on it, and you don't even know how to do a mag change, bro. What's he got? He's got the LA-5 on there, right? He's got or everything. A newer version. He's got, He's got the EOTech Surefire or... suppressor. He's got... Like all this Gucci stuff on that, like, and you know, he, it's probably his stuff that he had to buy. Oh, yeah. And it's an expensive setup. So, but did you not go shoot this thing? And then on top of that, how in every single gunfight are you just perfectly situated to not have to move? So you always have multiple, multiple combatants all over the place. And you have the perfect angle every single time to where you could just duck behind a rock, shoot back, and hit all these angles. But none of those angles work to your disadvantage well hang on now he's a seal so yeah. i mean he's proficient in what he does a again it's just exploiting this whole like seals are bigger than life so where you nothing affects you negatively everything you do is in this positive way Even i can sit behind yourself. i can sit behind this rock by myself and kill 10 enemy combatants all over the place at multiple different angles because i picked the perfect lot spot, you know. It's like, come you on. Sit here. I could chill here all day. Yeah. They're never going to advance on me. Yeah, they don't move. They he just sits there and shoots them in the face, and they just keep <laughs> playing whack a mole with them. Yeah. Like, come on, dude. That's just not how it works. Yeah. Yep. Whoops. <laughs> okay. <Easy. laughs> Whoopsie. We got the same one. Pause, Pause. It. <laughs> Yo, my guys are just in vans. My God. I've, <laughs> I've never seen an ISIS fighter in vans, brand new vans in oh, my life. I dude. saw that. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. First of Two all, of them. first of all, if you want to scream low budget in a film, have all your ISIS fighters cover their face so you could reuse the white guy. There's like all white, all white people with their faces covered like this. And then doing this, so like every single time in a movie, you can't see someone's mouth. They start doing yeah. action hands. Like you realize they're talking to each other. Just because you can't see my mouth doesn't mean that I'm not talking to you. I don't need to start going. <laughs> but that's what they do. They cover their faces and they start talking with their hands so then they can add in yeah. the voices later on. So you had look like what like five 18 year old white kids yeah. and they start running away and that is confirmed by their brand new vans <laughs> that they just bought the day before because they got paid 200 bucks like they just grabbed two guys that were walking by on like a studio yeah. tour or something They're like hey hey hey, we need you put this yeah. on real quick jump in here you're gonna be the taliban <laughs> they're gonna be like what the fuck are you serious you want to be in a movie <laughs> Bro, just so Jeez. terrible, dude. Terrible, terrible, terrible. I'm glad I'm glad we both picked that one up. I mean, 
You can pause it. The GoPro commercial. It's the end of the movie. Movie's over. Because he died. He's, he's dead. <laughs> he's <laughs> dead. You see how high he was? You can see the rocks from here. The way it's paused, you can see the rocks under there the was, water. Yeah, there was no, like, deep... There's no way that's going to be deep enough. Like, you are done. Both legs are broken. Pelvis is broken. Movie's over. Why don't you just try to figure out a way to climb down that? Like, nobody's chasing you. you yeah. You pretend like they're chasing you, but every time in this movie there's a bad guy, they just stay in that same position. Yep. And b before this, in the middle of the gunfight, he kind of, like, stops, takes his bag, and fucking launches it. Like, I, it's just gone. <laughs> it just throws it over. Like, for I never want to see you again. For such a heavy bag, like, that would be like a swing and toss. And this guy, like, overhand just launches it like Tom Brady. And then after this, at the end of this whole whitewater rafting, he happens to wind up in the bag. On his right bag. There. Yeah, it's perfect. He's like, oh, perfect. He's like, oh, that's so good. That's so good. It's like I wrote it that way. Either he's the luckiest guy. You know, you know what this movie reminds me of? Hmm. It's like the inbred cousin of Lone Survivor. It's like everybody is trying to redo Lone Survivor. Failing miserably. And it's so bad. The only movie that's gotten anywhere close when it comes to like the realism and the authenticity of Lone Survivor has been The Covenant. The Covenant did good. And so just stop. Yeah. Just let it die. Like do something completely different. The whole like one man army thing has been done multiple times. Yeah, it's a wrap. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what, what was that? So they we're 30 minutes into this movie, and all of a sudden the movie becomes a different movie. <laughs> and then, so like, it's about him escaping. 30 minutes in, it becomes about him saving this girl. I forgot all about this part. Yeah, but then the guy, the the dad, like, dies. He goes, oh, shit. And he goes over and he does three pumps, or four. One, two, three, four. And he looks up to God and says, He's yours now. Yeah, he's in your hands now. He's in your it's hands. It's like, that is the most feeble, half-hearted attempt at saving yeah, somebody I've, I've ever never, seen. You didn't check his pulse. You don't even know why he passed out. You just start pumping three times. You're like, well, that's all I can do, boys. <laughs> that's like my love life. <laughs> <laughs> Look up to God and be like, it's in your <laughs> One, Four solid pumps with everything you have. And you're like... Uh, <laughs> I've done all I could do. Oh my god, this is terrible. Oh, it's so bad, dude. Like, why even do the CPR yeah. if you're not actually trying to save his life? Like, exactly. Like, what what was the point of those four pumps? And then the fact that you're talking to the girl, you look over and you're like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most, the biggest inconvenience to you possible that this guy's passing yeah, out oh, dead. Fuck. And you're like, well, to make it look good for the kid that's sitting in the back seat. <laughs> Oh, I tried, girl. I'm sorry. Jeez. And now he's got to run away with this little white girl for the rest of the film <laughs> for like an hour and a half. It is, yeah. That they're just running. It's like, dude, what? Like, who looked at this script? Well, I know who looked at this script. Him. And then who revised this script? Him. That's what happens with a dictatorship. <laughs> yeah. Just, like, everything goes through him. He's like, no, no, this makes sense. Trust me. I just see him looking in the mirror and be like, you're making a damn good movie. <laughs> and no matter what any of them say. You're a star. love that scene. Did you dude. ever have that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, once again, it's like it, just looking at him with this uh, quarterback sleeve over the top of his uniform, it looks so ridiculous. And then for him to pull out his, his phone, which guys, if you don't if you don't know, when we have those phones attached to our chest, it's just a cell phone. It's not some super computer. It's an Android. Yeah, it's just <laughs> it's an, an Android, Android phone. phone. That's it. So whatever app that we download into that phone in order, typically it's going to be like GPS maps. Yeah. 
So we could scroll in and see like our location. We could see terrain. We can get an idea of like, you know, movements and tactics. But it, the you don't open your phone and then all of a sudden it's like uh, fucking Jarvis <laughs> where it's like you have five and a half <laughs> kilometers to your destination. And with this route, it's going to take you this long. It's like they open it up and all of a sudden it was this like advanced computer yeah. system showing him how far he had to walk. It's like most of the times those things don't fucking work. That's what I was about to say. Like- the connection's out. You don't get anything from it. And then you got to open up your app because at the end of the day, it's just a cell phone. So you're opening it up you're just like your phone. It would be like this attached to your chest. You're going to your app. You got to click on that app. And you're like, oh, Google Maps. R- loading. Fuck. Yeah. Like maybe, you know, 30 minutes from now, you could zoom in and then it'll be loading again. You're like, Sick, dude. One day I'm going to see where the fuck I'm at. It's not going to tell me where to go. It's not a GPS. Like popping up with little like yeah. alerts. It's like like he lined have... his route, dude. Yeah. Like how the hell does that thing know what your route's going to be? This guy can't get comms for most of the movie, but he's got this super reliable yeah, piece of Yeah, you should have just been like, call help. All right. So the big thing for me for this scene, the most unrealistic part is we both have children. This little girl's five years old. She hasn't once said her legs are tired. She's got to pee. <laughs> She's hungry. She she wants water. Yeah, we, She's just happy to trek through the woods with this fucking stranger. We took our kids to Disneyland together, dude. Yeah. <laughs> they were no done after an hour. Like 30 minutes. And that was flat terrain. These yeah. guys are going up and down mountains. That's hilarious. I didn't even think about that. Both our girls were just, they were all like trying to ride in the stroller with me. Your baby was just like, just like <laughs> sleeping. She's got shade, a fan on her, ice water. Uh, water oh. snacks and she's still too hot for You're right yeah and this girl is just like the most gangster chick on the planet yeah, she's not like you want to walk 10 miles uphill yeah it's like okay she's, as an ass for an ipad at, at once you know like come on is, <laughs> <laughs> you mean that guy standing there you don't know what a guy is who's oh who's that <laughs> it's like a comedy. Yeah. Yo, watch this. <laughs> Pause. Yo, what the? F- First of all, the awkward. Who's that? Stare back. Oh, that- <laughs> Uh, like 10 gun, times, gun, 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 you got gun, I got gun, you got gun, I got gun, you got gun, we got guns. <laughs> and then he pulls out his knife, throws it at the guy's face. You hit him dead nuts in the face, dude. So, uh, all right, Assassin's Creed, you're pretty <laughs> awesome with the throwing knife. But then the guy falls to his back dead. So what do you do? You run up and stab him 75 more times in the <laughs> face. Like, <laughs> in front of this five-year-old girl. Like, dude, first of all, What's wrong with one, you? One quick, as you're running up to him, okay, yeah, I I'll give him that. Run up to him, just in case. But as you're closing in, you're like, oh, this guy's dead. He's like, no, I got to no, mutilate his body. Hold on a second. Let me make sure. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> Dude, it was like Forrest Gump in this guy's face. It was like Forrest Gump's mom was getting railed out. He was... <laughs> your mama show sure cares about your schooling, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sound he made while he just repeatedly stabbed this guy's face in. Oh. Like, what kind of serial killer are you, dude? That was wild. And then it just zooms into this girl's face like trauma, 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 oh, trauma. Oh, for sure. That's the most realistic part of this movie. Yeah, she was <laughs> this just girl's like, ruined. She wasn't even probably acting. She's like, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> like, this whole production's weird as shit. So first off, what the hell? Just... We got Johnny Strong who's zip tied in the front of his hands, and we got Osama bin Laden, who's the main bad guy in the movie. And yeah. Johnny Strong does a, a legitimate sear technique. However, it's the wrong set of restraints. He goes up, and you see him do this and break the zip ties. 
Which if you do that with zip ties, you're just gonna fuck yourself up. It's not it's not tape. Like, I talked about zip ties one time in extraction and the whole internet went nuts. <laughs> they like I was like because when we were in Sear, we had the thick zip ties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, like, like you're not breaking through. You're those not things. breaking through those zip ties, and it was meant for that. Because it's like, what guy is gonna put an adult male in normal zip ties? It's, yeah. you would break that easily. Yeah. So like that is a technique to break normal zip ties. In Sear school, we had the real thick, like heavy duty ones. So you have to cut them, and that was the point. They're like, if we're gonna tie you up, you're not just gonna do this and break them. You're gonna learn how to cut yeah. the plastic. So they're trying to teach us to overcome real heavy duty zip ties. So they you can like break them that way, but if they're thin enough, you can. But the thing that got me was when he remember that movie with Angelina Jolie where she's like bending the bullet yeah. by doing that as she's shooting, and then he just grabs the AK and he's just like spins <laughs> it around and everybody's dead. It's like Come on, dude. Come on. It's like you missed one hundred percent of those. And shots. then the fact that they make the main the final boss into basically Osama bin Laden <laughs> reincarnated. The most stereotypical looking like Afghan. We bad all know guy. that picture of Osama bin Laden where he looks like this. He's yeah. got the old BDU top on, the shit on his head. Like this is the big he, nose. He was, yeah, he's like, up. Oh, you know what? My bad guy is beer. Osama. Yeah. But guess what? Your other seal buddy already killed him. We read the books yes. from all of them. They all killed him. It's like, dude, your timelines are so <laughs> trash here. It's like you're telling me you were in a cave with Osama, like. <laughs> Wait, you killed Osama bin yeah. Laden too? It's like you're messing How many guys, how many of these seals you're killed messing Osama? Up all the stories that we're trying to piece <laughs> together of all the other seals that killed Osama bin Laden. Yeah, it's like everybody was a seal killed Osama bin Laden. I'm pretty sure I killed Osama bin Laden. No fucking way. I killed Osama well, bin Laden. No, you didn't kill Osama yes, bin Laden. Yes, I did. Laden, you I can't kill him because I killed him. I killed Osama bin Laden. It was me. <laughs> it was Abel kill Osama bin Laden. Abel killed Osama bin Laden. Oh, my gosh. Abel <laughs> killed Osama bin Laden. This whole time, uh, he trumps us all, dude. I killed bin Laden. I killed Osama bin Laden. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Can we end this movie, please? Please, yeah. This I'm is terrible, done. man. I'm, I'm sorry. And look, I feel bad because I've realized recently a lot of our movies get back to the people that actually make the movies, yeah. which is partly why Tyler Gray was here, right? Yeah. It got back to him. So I, I have a feeling it'll probably get back to Johnny Strong at some point. And I know he probably put a Tip- lot of work into this movie, but... Typically, people God. reach out when we say something positive. So we got reached out to Tyler Gray. Super grateful for that. We're not saying that like he reached out to us as in like... Stepped up to We know that it was mutually beneficial yeah. for Tyler Gray to reach out. That was really cool for us, too. Um, but it was also really cool when guys from The Covenant the reached Covenant, out. Yeah. You know, actors from The Covenant, the um, technical advisor from The Covenant reached out. And, and now we're friends. Like, one of the actors from The Covenant did uh, wrote something about my, my new book that's coming out in January. And so he did a forward for my book, which is really cool. Yeah. So it's like... But What's the other we never get reached out to by the ones that went south. Well, there was one. What was it? This is Zero Dark Thirty? Oh, no. That's uh, the, the, seal the recruitment movie. video for SEALs. I for, uh, I, no, not the PSYOPs one. Everyone hated it. The one for Psyops. SEALs where it was made by SEALs. Oh, it was Active Valor. Active, Active Valor. Valor. Yeah, one of yeah. those guys reached out. Yeah, it's so it's crazy to think like the reach, like this little show that we have actually gets out. We're just sitting but, here talking shit. We don't mean to like reach you guys, and but at the same time, we can't think about that because then we're gonna sh- like change our opinions. Right. And if the movie sucks, it sucks. And let's let's be honest. Like if someone invited Kurt and I to do acting in a movie, and then we did it, and it came out and it was shitty, we're gonna have to say it was shitty. We'd probably be here doing the same thing. Like Sean, you look thing. like an idiot in this. I'm scene. like Kurt. Your acting is <laughs> like my ball sack, bro. It's shit's wrinkly and trashy and hairy <laughs> and you know it is what it is we got to be honest don't talk, the mi- about my acting. don't talk about my balls <laughs> the minute that we start changing our opinions on stuff is like the whole show will uh, we, gotta, we gotta stay authentic we right? gotta stay so, authentic and this movie was not it yeah so johnny strong i'm sorry bro this movie's ass i don't i think that you could you could do better you could do better <laughs> this is <laughs> don't this is not a sleigh yeah. as my daughter would say yeah don't just don't don't be a uh, seal anymore. As a matter of fact, ninety nine percent of the actors out there stop being seals. You know what would have worked for this movie if he was like a regular army, like E two, that somehow got trapped behind enemy lines, and then he did all this. He was like, "Oh, good for him." <laughs> all right. <laughs>
What made it? Oh, oh Aaron. Hey, all right. Well, on that note, show's over. <laughs> <laughs>